Hello, Western Civ. I believe this is what, week three? Um, moving along. We have our first exam this week. It's a cram course, right? You're going to see it's not that hard. I mean, it's maybe hard to just get done, but it's, it's, um, it's kind of like doing a Sunday paper. It's only worth 25 points. Um, it is due Thursday. You do have a lot of work to do per se, but then everything else is due Sunday, okay? Um, and there's not um, discussion, I believe, this week. Um, so and I just want to remind you again, too, like, I, you know, I, I, I hate how much information is getting thrown at you. And again, you know, as I mentioned in my first announcement, I, there's nothing I can do about this because we have a cram course. And um, I can imagine just after a while you're watching these videos and you're like, oh, oh. okay, well, look, um, what I want to suggest to you, because, you know, my cl- in my class, I don't require you to memorize a whole lot of information. I think for the sake of those of you who actually want to learn something in this class that actually care beyond just the grade, um, just really focus on some interesting details of things that, that you might think directly applies to you. This is what's really important. Even though maybe this isn't the most, I mean, you know, I don't have the best PowerPoints for this. Uh, I, I usually like to have much better PowerPoints, but when I, I think I told you in, the, in my first announcement, I had to put together this class very quickly when I, when I first taught it. And so I had to use this kind of generic, uh, basic PowerPoint settings without a lot of um, better visuals. But, my God, this is a very, very important section to understanding the modern world and what's happening right now. And the, the, the uh, paper that I'm going to have you do Sunday on all the definitions, like what's socialism, anarchism, Zionism, and, and, and conservatism, and all of that. When I talk about that being really important, um, that's what I mean. Okay? Like, these terms... I'm, so, for example, I remember when Obama was the president and he was being called a communist or a socialist. I was laughing. And all my friends that were socialists were said, oh, we wish he was a socialist. I mean, the Democratic Party has taken on certain ideas that are linked to socialism, but it's nothing like the European socialists. And, and, and by the way, um, even conservatives in many parts of Europe still defend uh, socialist ideas. Actually, even Canada. The majority of of Western uh, democracies, capitalist democracies, have socialist medicine. We're the ones that are on the odd, odd end out of, of that. That means people pay through taxes. You don't get a bill from the doctor by going to the doctor. And despite all the horror stories you hear in the United States, I've never met myself a European or a Canadian at this point. And when I was in Canada, I asked everybody. This idea that, that they're fleeing from socialist medicine? Oh, man, no. I mean, there's some. They're on Fox News. I, I've seen them. <laughs> I've seen, but I'm serious, though. Now, but, and you can be a political conservative. And so, I, I watched, um, was it David Cameron at the time? He was uh, the head of the Conservative Party in, in Britain. And he said, we'll defend the National Health Care Service in Britain better than the, the Labor Party. In other words, we conservatives will pre- protect are, he didn't use the word socialist, but that's what it was, that institution, um, the medical institution, um, better than even the socialists. <laughs> um, now, here's my whole point. Uh, I'm just, I, I, I just want to, look, in the United States, majority of Americans, the, you'll, you'll hear the term socialist and, and communist, and most people can't define it. And you'll hear left-wing people call somebody a fascist, and they can't define it. These are terms that came out of the Cold War uh, period that have a real history. And, um, you know, we just don't have these terms down very well. And uh, it, they're more like pejorative terms, right? And then even like the term Zionism, um, I covered that more like at the end. And I think I was really listening to some of my lectures. You will understand the Israel-Palestine conflict better than like 99% of Americans, even in just my short clip, if you just really pay attention to that section that I teach, regardless of what you think, or like whose side you would take on it. Um, and um, what else do I want to say? 
Um, well, yeah, okay, I mentioned this in my other class, but I just want to say something. In the United States, we only have two political parties. Britain, France, you have so many different options that you can be a part of. So uh, what I think is kind of interesting, using, thinking about these terms that, that have come up, you'll often hear people in the Republican Party accuse uh, Democrats of being uh, communists. And you'll sometimes hear people on the more liberal left side accusing the Republican Party of, of being fascist, you know, like Mussolini or, or, or Hitler's ideas or something. I mean, not everybody talks like this, but, but you have two sides that, that do say those things about each other. And I just want to point something out. So let's say that you, are, uh, you have a person who is a white nationalist, neo-Nazi, and you want to vote, and you're going to participate in politics, and you're going to target certain people that have the same values of you, which party would you operate within? Well, if you research this, you know it's the Republican Party. Now, simultaneously, if you're a communist, and they're out there still, which party would you operate within? Like, who would you target? What would be, you'd go to the Democratic Party. So if you go to a Democratic convention or you go to a Republican convention, you will brush shoulders somewhere with somebody of a far right or a far left ideology there. So if you want to accuse the Republican Party of having fascists in it, um, you're, you're going to be empirically correct. And if you want to accuse the Democratic Party of having communists in it, you can, you're going to be empirically correct. Um, but what we're forgetting is that there's, no, there's only two parties in the United States. So every political ideology has to pick, like, whatever you're inclined to do, which could be very different. I mean, for example, in Europe, they have political parties that they are Christian socialists. They take on conservative um, ethics, uh, you know, and ideas about morality, but they have liberal views about economic policies. They're okay with spending money on the poor. Uh, using socialist ideas and simultaneously maybe having a different view about um, uh, things like uh, abortion or some other topic that's, that's, that's like more contentious on that level. Um, in the United States, if you're a moral conservative and you're economically liberal, which party would you go to? The, the, the Republican Party tends to target the religious moral right and are fiscally conservative. So do you get where I'm going with this? Okay, so I just want you to think about all this. Now, also, I mentioned in the um, lectures about the weakening of unions. Well, the Supreme Court just even did more weakening to unions now. Um, this is certainly the era of, uh, of Republicans getting what they want. So whatever you think about all of this, like we are seeing ourselves kind of being pushed back into the 19th century. Some people think that that's good and some people think that that's negative. I'm talking about environmental regulations, labor conditions. Um, yeah. Now, I mean, look, at, now that might have sounded very biased on my part. No, no, no I'm, I'm serious, though. We had a time in our country where, with rapid industrialization, that we didn't have a lot of labor laws that were enforced. We didn't have any kind of socialist uh, uh, ideas. We didn't have environmental uh, protections and all those things. That was 19th century America, at least in terms of Western civilization. How good was that? And what does that mean about now? And like, d d does, it, does it have any relevance to now? That's something for you to think about. But I do think that there's a strong case to be made that you have to make without even pushing a particular, particular ideology that we are moving into the direction of the America of the 19th century uh, around the time uh, periods of what, what we're talking about here in, in this class. So I don't know. Think about that. Challenge me on that if you want to. I feel free. Ultimately, you know, history will, like, as we go several decades down the line, what I'm saying about this will be proven to be false or true or something in, in the middle, probably something in the middle. Everything's always a little more complex, right? But anyways, having said that, um, you guys, I hope everybody has a great week and we'll be in touch.